Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantinetti. On today's Bible Nugget, I'm, I'm excited as always for the Word of God, but I love this verse, this passage of Scripture. It's actually a few verses we're going to be looking at, and um, it's a very familiar passage, but I want to encourage you this morning. So let's dig into the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself to, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ God. Excuse me. That is in the message that God has given us. And therefore, we are messengers or we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal th- through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What an awesome passage of scripture. You know, I want to focus in on just a few things today. The Bible says here that the old is passed away. Now, I want to quote a verse of scripture that I'm sure that you also are very familiar with. And it's, you know, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, what does that have to do with this passage of the new creation? Well, the word beginning does. Beginning and old things. You say, well, how does it work together? Well, in the Greek, the word beginning is arche. And it means a long time ago way back now the word old things and when we said old things have passed away comes from that same word archaic and i would think upon this scripture many times and i finally realized that what jesus did by dying on the cross he took away the old sin that adam had committed in the garden you always got to go back to the garden If you want to see what the problem is, go back to the garden. Now you say, how does that work? Well, you see, by one act of disobedience, Adam brought the entire world into sin. And because of that one sin, we must all be punished because of it. That's right. We were destined to hell. But when Jesus came and John the Baptist saw him one day, and he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29, for your reference. And what's interesting about it is that I was thinking about it the other day, and I said, you know, in reality, did Christ take all the sin away from me? Well, (laughs) I still sin. You still sin. We all sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. But what Jesus did on the cross was that he took away the penalty, the punishment that we should receive because of sin. He took it out of the way so that we might inherit eternal life with him. Now think about it. We all sin every day. But the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First letter of John, chapter 1, verse 9. So look at this. Watch this. Although I sin, and you sin, and we sin, there is forgiveness from the penalty that Adam did in the garden. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, through one man, sin entered into the world, and through that one sin, death to all men. I sin, you sin, but when you become a born-again Christian, When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the penalty of that sin is taken away. Imagine, a cop stops you. He's going to give you a ticket because you broke the law. Then when he writes the ticket, he rips it up. And you say, well, what are you doing? He said, well, someone actually paid this ticket before I gave it to you. So you see, the sin matter still deals with us. We're still living in these bodies that are unredeemed. We're still waiting for the redemption of Christ when he comes back. Amen? Because we've been sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us that when we heard the gospel of our salvation, 
We were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit unto redemption. So we are redeemed up there. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ up there. We are positioned with him in perfect harmony, in perfect unison, in perfect relationship. But down here, we're still walking practically and we're messing up. But it doesn't matter. See, when we mess up, we have someone that stands between us and God, the man Jesus Christ, the intercessor. Watch this. The Bible tells us that he ever lives to intercede for the saints. Now, I learned something about prayer, that when you pray according to the will of God, God listens to you. Now, what, what do you think God hears when Jesus prays for us, when he prays for you, that you would make it, that you would stay the course? Now, even though we fail, his prayers are being answered for us because he is our high priest. Now, check this out. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God preordained what we would be doing today. Listen to this, Peter. I love it by which he has granted us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires, really the word lust. Now, I want you to understand something about this divine nature that you and I have as Christians. Awesome. We have two natures living in us. You say, what? I heard someone say, God took away all my sinful nature. I said, no, he didn't. It still abides in you and it abides in me because we sin. But there's another nature that lives within our spirit, and that is the nature of the living God, the resurrected Christ. And that nature that is divine, that is connected by the Holy Spirit and by the power of his word, gives us the power to say no to sin. Now, it's something that we learn. Someone said it well when they said this, because he is sinless, we can sin less. Hallelujah to that. So I'm excited that I'm a new creation. If you are in Christ, you're a new creation. If you're watching this and you have not accepted Jesus, then listen, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to another place and it's not good. But if you accept Jesus Christ simply by asking him to come into your life, into your heart, he will come in and make you a new creation, and the old will pass away. Now, watch this now. The title of this message is, Be Holding It No More. Stop holding on to the things of the past. If you keep holding on to those things of the past, you will never progress to the future. The only time... The past can catch up to you. As we're running this race, the only time the past can catch up to you is when you turn around and run toward it. Stop running toward your past. It is gone. It is old. It is wasted. It can no longer exist in your life if you don't want it to. And I want to share something real quick with this. Now, look, look at this. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewed of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit doing inside of you and me every day, all day long? He is sanctifying us. He is, he is cleansing us and washing us and teaching us how to walk in this righteous walk. Hallelujah. One more verse of scripture. For behold, Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Listen to what he's saying here. That when God, in the, in the last day, when he judges and he brings this whole thing to uh, uh, an end, he's going to make a new world, a new heaven and earth. And watch this. It says that it will no longer come to mind the old world. It won't be there. So what is he saying? He's saying he created us new in Christ. We are a new creation in Christ. And being a new creation, we don't have to walk in the old ways. In reality, we don't even have to keep it in mind. So with that, 
I wish you a spirit-filled new creation day in Christ that you would walk in the purposes and the blessings and in the power of the Holy Spirit all the day long. God bless.